Hello, True Crimers. It is time for Worst Deaths Wednesdays, and this is a Freak Accidents edition. And this is the story of the I-35 West Mississippi River Bridge collapse. Viewer discretion is advised. The I-35 West Mississippi River Bridge was an eight-lane bridge, and it crossed over the Mississippi River. It was located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. This bridge uh, was constructed in 1967, and it typically carries about uh, 140,000 vehicles daily. It is approximately 1,900 feet long, and its highest point in terms of the bridge itself was 115 feet. The date, August 1st, 2007. It was approximately 6.05 p.m. People were going home from work, going home to see their families, having dinner. But the people on the bridge at that moment, they would not get to do any of that. The traffic on the bridge at that point was going at a snail's pace. Obviously, this is, you know, post-work traffic. Um, so it was kind of congested there on the bridge itself. But suddenly, literally just out of nowhere, the entire central portion of this bridge collapsed. A little over a hundred vehicles would collapse with the bridge itself. So I'm about to show you a uh, security camera footage um, that was found that actually shows the entire bridge collapse. This was taken from kind of far away at an you know at an odd angle, but. Uh, I, did, I do want to give you just a heads up, a warning, you know, just potentially this could be um, triggering to some people. Just a warning. As you can see, the bridge just completely gives way and falls into the waters below. First responders got there within uh, five or six minutes. The Literally just within the moments after this happening, there were people who were not on the bridge and people who were on the bridge itself, but like not involved in the actual collapse. They all just sort of immediately went into rescue mode and began to go there and try to see who they could save, what they could, you know, help with. Within about an hour and a half or so, uh, you know, with after the you know ambulances and first responders got there, they were able to save about 145 people. Um, that were either triaged there on the scene or taken to the hospital. And because of the number of people involved, they had to be transported to multiple hospitals. There were also about 22 children involved in this. Um, they were all taken to the nearby children's hospital. When everyone kind of first arrived, they, I mean, they noticed that not only were there just tons of cars, not only in the, the river, there were some floating down the river. There were people literally being taken down by the river. Um, there were also cars that had completely just engulfed in flames. Um, there was a semi-truck that was, uh, the front of it was engulfed in flames. And unfortunately, the driver itself would be found later inside, um, completely charred and dead. There were cars that were literally just crushed underneath the the concrete right next to where the semi truck was where the man was burned um there was a school bus uh, full of children who were on their way back from a field trip they took that day they were going to like a water park or something um none of them were killed uh but you know one of the uh people on the bus one of the chaperones i think was managed to basically save all the kids by and the bus driver too by kicking out the emergency exit in the back and, and saving everyone. In terms of recovering the deceased people, it took about three weeks for them to do that. They found bodies downriver. Um, they also found bodies crushed underneath debris. And sadly, a total of 13 people lost their lives that day. Their names were Sherry Engebretson, Artemio Trinidad Mina, Julia Blackhawk, Patrick Holmes, Peter Hausman, Paul Eitstadt, Greg Jolstad, Scott Sathers, Christina Sakharafis, Sadia and Hannah Sahal, Vera Peck, and Richard Chit. Hannah Sahal was the uh, only child 
um, killed in the collapse, uh, and she was just a two-year-old baby. And Vera Peck and Richard Chit were a mother and son. Uh, Richard was 20 years old. So along with the 13 unfortunate fatalities, there were a total of about 150 people who had um, non-fatal injuries. So what happened? It took a little over a year for them to finally um, end their investigation and announce what it was that caused the bridge collapse. So they discovered that the main cause was undersized gusset plates. I'm not sure what those are. They also discovered that over the, the years, um, because again, this was built in the, in the 60s, they had added uh, roughly two inches more of concrete to the bridge that was not part of the original plan. So this actually added weight to the bridge that was not accounted for when it was constructed. There was also um, an unusual amount of construction equipment on the bridge at that time. Um, kind of all positions sort of near the central location of the bridge. That amount of construction equipment was 580,000 pounds. So you add all of that plus the extra two inch layer of concrete, not to mention this was in bumper to bumper traffic. So you had all the weight of the cars and passengers and everything also on top of the bridge at the time. So all of this combined would just create this bridge to just finally collapse. A lot of times, and, and stories like this I've covered in the past, a lot of times it's a, a corrosion issue um, that over time these bridges and the steel get corroded. And uh, But in this case, they said that wasn't the issue. There was no corrosion, um, not significant corrosion, but they did also determine through their investigation, however, that the bridge was not... It wasn't like looked at or checked for corrosion on a, on a uh, consistent basis. In uh, May of 2008, the state of Minnesota was actually able to um, award a $38 million compensation package uh, for all of the victims and their families. And then in 2012, the company who designed and, and constructed the bridge... Jacobs Engineering Group, they would end up paying about $9 million to the state of Minnesota, but they did not admit any wrongdoing whatsoever. The bridge has since been uh, reconstructed. They also would construct a really beautiful uh, memorial uh, for the victims of the bridge collapse. Uh, and if you live in, in Minneapolis, you can see it. It is uh, just off of West River Parkway, and it's uh, it's a garden. It uh, looks really nice, so it's really cool that they did that. And that is it for today's video, folks. I hope you found it interesting. I will be back tomorrow with a long-form true crime video, so until then, catch you on the next flip side. No. No, Mike. <laughs>